All right, well, good afternoon. Again, Phillips League, the deputy chief of the Intel program statewide out of Sacramento headquarters. So when I first started in Intel, which I didn't know was Intel as a sit unit leader, uh, it has definitely grown to what it is today. So we'll go over kind of some of the membership, but today I really want to focus in on our solution and our partnership with Technosola. Kind of where we started, where we're at today, what the value is of this software and of this suite of products and how we integrate it on a daily basis into a lot of our operational decisions from the initial attack to the extended to the major attack incidents. So how we came up with Technosilva is uh, Governor Newsom had a proclamation in 2018 for a procurement sprint in 2019 called RFI Square, the Request for Innovative Ideas. And it was a solicitation out to folks to bring in solutions that we had identified. And it was a procurement sprint for the state to see how quickly they could work through those processes. Thankfully, as Cal Fire, we were the recipient of that. After we announced it, we had 131 submissions. Of that, we chose one to be the leading solution for uh, our problem set for emerging fires, uh, predictive analysis, and wildfire risk. And that was us, uh, Tecno Silva. We are a, a company based in San Diego, all the founding in Spain a long time ago. That's where I learned my proper Spanglish. Thanks, <laughs> and decided to be in Southern California. Uh, so we're not a startup. We are not an academic company. We're just a company that we've been 27 years working just to provide the best wildfire technology, data, and size to the wildfire agencies. Uh, we're doing it worldwide. We have right now a team of about 80 people. Uh, the reason there are so many people is because this is a very complex problem and we have to deal with all kinds of technologies. Many of them that we've seen here, we have to talk with many of the other companies that work here to integrate with them to, be, to make the better sensors, evacuation information, uh, information coming from the schedule and all of that. We have to integrate all of that through all kinds of technologies supercomputing, mobile computing, uh, remote sensing, and all of that. that that's, that's what our team does. Uh, because of what we were fo heavily focused on the wildfire modeling and the science, we also internally try to fill the gaps on the science that are out there. Because to be honest, this wildfire science is very young. It was developed in the US, mostly Missoula Fire Lab, uh, 50 years ago. And we're still learning. And we, the best way to learn is to do it with the hand, uh, by the hand with our users, right? Um, I like, we, in the fire behavior world, we like the fire triangles. So this is the triangle of the technology, fire technology triangle, where we need on one side to work with the best fire scientists. I mean, it's not computer science only. It's, it's focusedly, focus, we're very focused on work with the best fire scientists. We work with the, we have a five years agreement with the Missoula Fire Lab to develop the technology. San Jose State uh, 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 scientists are helping us with the next generation of wildfire modeling. And then we have to work with the users because we're driven by the users. And that's the role of the technologies. We don't provide technology, we have to provide tools. And to do that, we need to work with them as Mark said before, because that's the only way to provide something good. Uh, we don't work only in, we work internationally, but in, in the US, uh, uh, we, we work everywhere, mostly uh, in the South. We started working in Texas, 2011, and then we moved to Florida, Virginia, and we leave the fire in the South, and we learn from them. It's a different way to live with fire. Uh, and then we moved to the West. And, and in California, we're working with Cal Fire, but also we're working with some utilities companies to help them to reduce the wildfire risk. So our solution, our solution integrates a suite of products for the WFA wildfire analyst is Firecast, FireSim, and most recently this past year, Tactical Analyst. And we'll get into Tactical Analyst here in a bit, but I really want to focus on one thing that Robert had said in his uh, discussion earlier with with bringing in and really having that cohesion in integrating all of these things is ideal. So between bringing in integration of things that Intera has four years ago when we first stood here and gave these presentations and we said, let's all get together, let's collaborate, let's bring in everybody's EVL together, let's have this this big data storage event that is still the premise behind this and how we can integrate for better decision-making abilities. So we're going to see a little of the wildfire analyst core capabilities. 
The first one is that we, we talk about trying to predict what the FAR is. Chief Fennessy said, okay, we want to know what the FAR is going to do. And we try to do every day, uh, uh, we try to do that every day by modeling potential fires that start all over California. Actually, we're running it now all over the Western US. We start with virtual simulations of fire starting every kilometer. Sorry, we're international, international units. Uh, every kilometer for every three hours for the next five days. Why do we do that? To produce maps like this, maps that tell you five days in advance where the potential hotspots of fire or potential uh, impactful fires, where we can have large fires or impactful fires on buildings on population in advance. So you can set up units, uh, uh, help to set up the units preparedness. The second thing that we do is we integrate. We integrate on the, with the CATS, we integrate with the National Guard, we talk a little about the integration with the Fire Guard, to provide automatic predictions of every fire and evaluation of those fires. Because uh, the simulations are run in seconds. Uh, actually, on the supercomputer, we run 500 million simulations, half a billion simulations every, in one hour. But in one computer, we can run a simulation of 30 seconds. And it's, like this. It's not only the simulation, but it's the numbers and the analytics associated to the simulation that is important. And basically, we make a simulation, a number, a one to five. We want to also make it simple for the users. One is easy, it's our initial attack assessment uh, model, and five means that the fire behavior may be very high, ton of impacts, potential complexity for uh, operations in the field, and that's something that we provide in seconds for every fire that is coming. We also provide the automatic impacts on population and on buildings. So you have your numbers and your prioritization of every fire, and you know the estimated time of arrival of the fire or smoke this year to population and buildings. And finally, we automatically assess the initial attack with all these metrics that we synthesize in a report that we'll show later. But basically, when you look at map of California, this is one week in September this year, you don't see points with, fire, with incidents, you see points with numbers that tell you that potential fire is a one, that potential fire is a five. And all those automatic simulations are coming from CAT, hotspots from satellite, lighting strikes, or even fire guard, uh, fire guard uh, initi uh, initializations. So who can use this software? So in this audience, we have a, a myriad of our statewide Intel folks as well as our National Guard partners. So this model that we have at the suite of products, when, when we went past the procurement phase and secured the contract, it's for all members of CAL FIRE and all of our contract county members. So between Marin, Santa Barbara, Ventura, LA County, Orange County Fire Authority, all of our partners locally based also have the ability to integrate and to operate within this system to create those fire prediction spread runs. Hmm. Here we see, and um, we start to, we need to make it useful at the, at the easier level, at the first response level, at the initial attack level, and we did that by the integration with the tactical analysis. When the firefighter, let me go back, when the firefighter, there you go, gets the alert, there's an automatic assessment of that fire, and they have this one-pager report. This one-pager report, it's all they need to understand what is the potential of that fire with that initial attack assessment, the weather conditions, and the potential impacts on homes and, and goods. Um, I mentioned the integration with, uh, with fire guard. And at the beginning, we, we, we listened again to Fennessy saying, OK, we want to know where the fire is, where the fire is going to go. Fire guard has been a game changer for us. Fargar is giving us real-time situational awareness of every fire in the in, actually now in the nation. Every 10 minutes, we've seen the progression of every fire, and we could combine the progression of the fires with the expected, uh, with expected uh, prediction of what the fire can do. We use that observed fire behavior to calibrate the fire models, and that's been a game changer. Actually, we just submitted, uh, presented a, a paper reviewing uh, more than 2,000 fires with uh, FireGuard data that help us to improve the actual fire behavior models. It was never done before. Those actual fire behavior models were done with 200 fires. We used 2,000 just in two fire season. Very busy fire season, by the way. So the whole picture, the situational awareness, that integration again. So you're back at the command center, you're a duty chief of your unit, you're at uh, your GAC, what you're seeing is real-time spread predictions, where those resources are, 
tracking of those resources, integration of the alert California cameras. They, I believe tomorrow, Dr. Driscoll will be given a presentation. He's been instrumental in ensuring that we have access and those feeds to all of these things. So it improves not only that situational awareness on the outside, but on the inside as well. And also, uh, there's been a huge effort in the state. Uh, coming from the Wallen Fire uh, technology in the past, there was this NIROPS program that was phenomenal. But to be honest, that couldn't keep the pace of the fires that we've been facing lately in California. So with the effort of all the different sensors and all the different providers of cameras, we are integrating all of that and putting it into this uh, three-dimensional environment. Uh, one of the things, good things that is done is that you can see in the map, this is a 3D every environment where we can put uh, totally corrected the videos on the terrain on real time. Uh, that also works for drones, that works for any kind of aerial platform, and the integration has been done during this year, the, during this fire season. So this is uh, just a quick image of what we had ingested from a sensor platform, taking the Microsoft building footprint. So I was assigned to this incident on my team. This is the mill incident in, in uh, Siskiyou County. So talk, when we talk about windshield survey, and we'll get to FMAG hopefully if we get a chance, uh, when we talk about that windshield survey, how many homes have been impacted? How many homes have been damaged, destroyed, or threatened? So what we had done was a very quick analysis within minutes to hours of ingesting of this high resolution video in this Microsoft building footprint within the perimeter of the incident, being able to extrapolate those identified structures that had been impacted. And the number was 118. After seven days of on the ground damage inspection by a team of 17 people, they came up with the same number. So this is our FMAG form. So where does this all go into? How does this, how does this relate to our partners at OES? And how do these forms get populated? So within the program, both in the WFAE and the tactical analyst. You can easily open the application, draw a polygon, and then quickly and efficiently identify those values at risk in the population, the building footprint, and any additional fields that would be necessary to complete that uh, FMAG form. So the value of the tactical analyst is that fully scalable between the mobile, the tablet, and the desktop. So everything that is being placed into any one of those devices as it automatically syncs is viewable in those other platforms. All of those edits are fully NIFIS GIS standards. So as that incident initiates from that initial attack extended and beyond, all of those updates will be able to ingest within that system. So if you're a GIS person just coming into the incident, it's already built for you. Yeah. And all that data is open data as regarding through permissions and following standards. And this is an example of how to exploit that information in other platforms or extend the capabilities of the system through your uh, uh, RGS-based enterprise uh, system, right? This is an example of all the Farga data inside an every operational dashboard, or there are plenty of examples of how you can populate other applications, share with any, any other GS application that you have, because the data that we can provide, permission-based, uh, can, can be displayed together, okay? So how does this relate to us in on the ground? So we have three audiences that we cater to. We have our tactical folks that are on the ground that are actually putting out the fire, those that are just outside that maybe are attached to that unit, that city, that agency department, and those bigger picture that are at the GACs, that are at the state level, at the governor's office. So all of the integration that has been placed into it gives us that better, more accurate depiction of decision support of that situational awareness of all of these things that are happening. And 2D, being able to see those canyons. So when I brief out our ops folks and our IC and our pre-ops meeting, I can take that and flip that and having each one of those simulations, every single one of those attributes change on the fly. This is exactly what we're seeing in the field. Let's change this and create another simulation. So when we talk about CAD and how it dispatches to a location, the value of these fire prediction spread components is I can move that prediction spread run and change that location to update it to actually where it is. Mm. So this is one of the numbers of the system. It's been heavily used by the big team that Cal Fire has put in place. And we have some of them here. Yeah, some of them here. Continue to grow. 
continue to grow. I think that uh, as a technologist, I think I must say that, I mean, the investment that Cal Fire has done is not only in technology and the data. The most important part is the human factor. All these specialists, some of them, they don't have, they don't wear a uniform. Research data specialists, people that is taking care of that, how to make all this complexity useful at the unit level, and that's what is making this project so successful and Absolutely. really exciting in the future. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take questions. Yeah. Any questions? Oh, losing my mic. All right. All right. No questions. All right. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Very you. nice Thank presentation. You.